What is modern storybook? What do the ink symbols mean? Recently, Lorcana's creative lead, Shane Hartley, sat down with Nerdist to answer these questions and more. With this, we learned some new details about the look and feel of Lorcana, and we gained some insight on how the Lorcana team brought this game to life. Before we start, if you like this video and you want to see more Lorcana content like it, please consider subscribing. According to Shane Hartley, his team strove for a cohesive art style for the majority of the cards. They call this style Modern Storybook. It had to feel nostalgic, but not too old. Familiar, but original and exciting. He said, The Modern Storybook style we developed has visible line work to align with animation, as well as vibrant color washes that purposely break those lines. It mixes the traditional hand-drawn and painted attributes seen in fairy tale storybooks with new digital techniques. The Lorcana team looked to Disney films and classic 2D animators for inspiration. I could only find his hideout, I'd trap him in his lair. But wanted to interpret the characters in a new and modern way. Pay homage to the original, but bring the characters forward. To do this, the Lorcana team looked for artists who fit this style and who could help them develop it and set the tone for the game. Although the Lorcana team has worked with hundreds of artists so far, it's safe to say that some were leveraged more than others to set this artistic tone for the modern storybook feel. Artist Nicholas Cole is one of the most prominently featured in the first set, with 10 cards revealed to date, the most of any artist we've seen. The creative team clearly used Nicholas Cole to set Lorcana's tone. I, I just, I, I suppose that life is very difficult <laughs> and very full of awful things so often for all of us and and yet our lives are also full of like wonderful things and love and warmth and friendship and and when i think of wanting to transmit anything out there when i sit down to create um i really want to channel those those best experiences those things that are uh that make me glad to be a human you know if you want to see what the team means by modern storybook his pieces are a great reference Together, the creative team, art directors, and artists work together to ensure these new glimmers stay true to each character's origin story. Shane said, We look at elements of a character's story and iconic moments, their clothing, their regions, and even their cultural themes and time periods represented, and explore how these characters might adapt or be reinvented in this new world. The last thing we want to do is something that feels inauthentic for a character or their personality. It's important to stay true to the origins of the stories and the personalities of the characters. So although the creative team moves some characters into new directions, they always stay true to the core of who that character is. We've noticed that one way they do this is through artist selection and assignment. We've spoken to many Lorcana artists, and it's incredible how many have a deep connection to the characters they were asked to recreate. This connection comes through in the art. The last thing an artist wants to do is betray the origin story of a character that they love. The ink color symbols are carefully crafted to communicate the play style and nature of each ink color. Shane pointed out that none could imply good or evil, as both heroes and villains appeared in each color. Large mood boards were assembled that indicated the play styles and abilities of each color. That enabled the team to arrive at the six colors that we see today. Amethyst Glimmers use arcane and otherworldly abilities to achieve their goals. This swirling spiral symbol is reminiscent of an ethereal movement, like wind or a spell. This was the first symbol the Lorcana team completed, and it set the tone for the rest. Amber features a weaving knot design to reflect how amber glimmers work together and depend on each other to achieve goals. As a result, we also often see woven and overlapping lines in amber artwork. Emerald glimmers are flexible and adaptable, responding well to change. Shane said this was difficult, as they wanted to provide a symbol that looked like it was weaving, ducking, or bobbing. And as a result, this symbol implies movement, with the swirl having an obvious beginning and an end. Many emerald illustrations feature swirling patterns, wavy lines, or smoke as a result. Sapphire is the color of strategy, creativity, and intelligence. This symbol has elements of an eye and sacred geometry. We often see circle and line patterns reminiscent of the symbol in the art for this color. 
To us, it is the most scientific looking of all of the symbols, also evoking atoms or planets in orbit. According to Shane, steel glimmers are strong, large, powerful, and sometimes armored. This ink symbol evokes a fortress, a classic symbol of defense and strength. Ruby glimmers are fast, quick, evasive, and daring. They are the risk takers. According to Shane, this asymmetric design is meant to evoke speed, showing how Ruby characters can leap into action. Shane called the ink colors the periodic table of the Lorcana world. Just as each element has its own properties, so does each Lorcana ink color with symbols to convey their nature. The Great Illuminary is central to Lorcana's story and design. As you start to come through the experience, you're going to see the Great Illuminary. That's where our story takes place, and that's kind of the origin of the world of Lorcana. A blend of magic and science, this floating construct holds the ink casting station where magic ink comes to life. Shane said, the top is similar to a lightning rod and is designed to draw story stars into it, pulling through the center before projecting them into the ink casting stations. It is here, in the ink casting stations, that glimmers spring to life from magical ink. So it seems that a story star plus ink caster plus ink in an ink casting station equals a glimmer. Perhaps this is where the ink lands come from as well. Throughout the Illuminary, grooves serve as conduits for this ink to move around the structure. To us, these grooves seem like veins, a circulatory system with magical ink, the Illuminary's lifeblood. In fact, Shane conveyed that the Great Illuminary was meant to feel autonomous or alive. The Great Illuminary is so central to the game that it appears in the center of the O in Lorcana's logo, with six inks swirling in grooves around it. Within the Great Illuminary, magical columns circle the ink casting rooms. These columns, or pillars, are a big part of Lorcana's iconography and lore. Magical ink flows through these columns, and from it, glimmers emerge. The columns feature so heavily in the story that they make a part of the branding and design of the first set. According to Shane, the pillars not only create a branding element to frame the characters on the packaging, but they also provide a visual representation of how glimmers are created in Lorcana using magical ink. Pillars are an interesting element to work into the game's design. The dictionary defines a pillar as a person or thing regarded as reliably providing essential support for something. Pillars hold something up, ensuring that they survive and succeed. And we see Ravensburger building several pillars for this game that they have carefully adhered to throughout the game's design. One of these pillars is original art and lore. Uh, the rest of the art is going to show them in these reimagined ways, and I think that is what makes it very exciting to me, is that uh, we take these wonderful characters uh, and really kind of show them in, in new light, you can see. These are what bring the game to life, turning it from bland mechanics into a story on the table, a story that you get to live each and every time you play. We can't wait to see what comes next in the world of Lorcana and what new classic characters they bring into the present with their modern storybook design. Sign off catchphrase. <laughs>